Welcome back guys, Future Man 19 here. Um, remember guys, when I get to 50 purchases of my videos here on realworldpodcast.com, I promise to show my face. Um, I'm doing that because I don't necessarily want to show my face, but it might be easier to actually start teaching these lessons because then you could see more of my facial expressions and I do eventually want to get like a whiteboard where I could write on and stuff and I don't really want to wear a mask or like blur my face or something so um you know I don't really care either way if, if people see my face or not but that's what I'm promising you guys so make sure to share these videos um you know anywhere you can obviously this is only a a bsv um platform as of the moment but we can share it on twitch and twitter and things like that because i do spend a lot of time on twitch and twitter um not so much any other social network youtube has i mean youtube has blacklisted me i probably have had over 20 videos censored or removed completely from YouTube um, because I, you know, I'll, I'll say something that they don't like. So that's why I moved to this platform because I feel like I can say anything, right? And you know, and so I believe that's important. I don't, I don't think we should support platforms who censor us, right? If everyone just would you know walk the walk instead of just talk the talk you know i find it very ironic and somewhat hypocritical of people who complain about twitter on twitter or who complain about youtube while recording on youtube right like there's there are other options but like i said people are more motivated by money more motivated by the attention that they get the fame you know the followers all that stuff i'm not motivated by any of that truth is the only thing that motivates me and that truth is the only thing that motivates me to to talk to you guys to do these podcasts and stuff because honestly it's it is time consuming you know i have to do this whole hour hour long speech which like i said i'm not the best um order uh, i don't even like n talking to people <laughs> necessarily that much uh but i'm doing it because i believe the truth matters and i believe in the future i believe that truth can bring us into an age of enlightenment a golden age a thousand year of peace you know all the prophecies right all the prophecies have come true just like all the conspiracy conspiracy theories have come true as well that's why i'm not going to focus on conspiracy theories anymore because i've already proven them all to be true i've also proven the prophecies to be true as well if you want to uh, watch my youtube videos i ex I go into great detail of all the prophecies um, that are found in the book of Revelation that are happening right now during our time. So, you know, I don't like to rest on my laurels though. So I, <laughs> I want to talk about new things. I want to have refreshing ideas. I don't want to keep talking about the past. I don't want to talk about conspiracy theories that have already come true and proven to be true yeah we know there's a new world order coming we know there's an illuminati secret society out there right we know all these things we already know it we, we don't need to keep talking about like but that's all people know how to talk about they focus on these the more uh, dark aspect of things rather than talking about the light aspect so that's what I want to start focusing on because my two YouTube channel is focused on a lot of the dark side of things because I felt it important to reveal the lies because you want you have to know that you're being lied to before you can start accepting the truth right it's hard to teach you probably have noticed it's hard to teach people 
who believe in a lie so much that even if you give them the truth, it they won't believe it because they believe in the lie instead, right? Um, people don't want their paradigms to change, right? People like to keep keep it safe and they like to keep it um, how they like it. You know, they're resistant to change, but I change every day. I say I die every day and I'm reborn a new person every single day because progression is has always been my main my main goal I just need to progress even if it's just a little bit every day even if you just go to the gym for 30 minutes a day 20 minutes whatever do one set do some push-ups run 15 minutes like any amount of progress is progress right so and progress is is what makes us negentropic which is the opposite of entropy we don't want to be entropic right People ask me all the time, oh, how old are you? And I always say my age, and they always think I'm at least 10 years younger. They're like, no way, you're lying to me. You cannot be that old. You look 10 years younger than you say you do. Because I, it's the, these concepts that I'm teaching you have a real world effect on, on every aspect of your life, inclu including your, <laughs> your physical age, okay? I I can make my body I have control over my body and I have control um, over my emotions and every everything right because it, it takes a long time to master these these concepts but once you start to master them you start to realize and you start to see the changes that are happening inside of you all around you everywhere you go anywhere I go I affect the world around me. I affect the matrix, right? Just like Neo, everywhere he went, he could bend, he could bend the rules where he went, right? So that's what I'm offering to you guys. If you guys keep listening, if you keep uh, sharing my videos, because the best way to actually gain knowledge is to teach knowledge and a good way to teach is to just share the video and explain hey this guy's talking about this and that like it's kind of refreshing it's it's better than just the old doom and gloom kind of th concepts you know the doom and gloom videos that are getting pushed around all the time right it's, it's and you could you could see those people that talk and focus on the doom and gloom kind of things and you could <laughs> You see, it's wearing down their soul. It's wearing down their spirit. They look physically ill because they're just focused on these negative things. I only focused on these things because I wanted to bring them to light and say, Hey, look at these. All these people have been lying to you. All these things. This is what's going on behind the scenes. Okay. I am an observer. Okay. I'm a quantum observer, right? The quantum experiment, the double slit experiment where we can affect reality just with our observation alone, which is our consciousness. So we want to grow our consciousness, our awareness, where it's not just, it's not just limited to what we believe our consciousness is in. Like most people believe, oh, my consciousness is trapped in this small brain of mine, this monkey brain that I have, right? I call it a monkey brain. It's just the physical brain. The brain is just a, it's more like a, like a, I want to say like an antenna, right? Like a, a receiver, okay? The better you can receive, the better your mind is, the more open your mind is, the more information you can receive. So keep an open mind and realize that there's more to you than just the physical self. There's more to you than just having a monkey brain, okay? The people that, that, think that they're smart that go to college to go get PhDs blah 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 they are focused on their brain and what their brain can accumulate but I've my whole life I've been focused on spiritual things growing my spirit growing my consciousness okay because pretty much the same thing right consciousness is growing I can I can anywhere I go I'm like a bubble of energy right I can walk into a room people will feel my presence okay and the attitudes will change around the people I am I'm with right 
just like in the opposite end of the spectrum if you're a depressed person if you're an angry person or if you're anxious or whatever you you affect the people around you as well right if you're an angry person you're probably going to get in a fight with someone else right you're going to affect their bubble of consciousness and you can make them angry same with being depressed or sad if you're depressed or sad people won't want to be around you because it makes them feel sad and depressed as well so we can control these emotions you know i hate it when people just label themselves oh i'm i'm an anxious person or i'm a depressed person or i have a bad temper problem you are not these things you can you can progress you can learn from from those things you can change if you want to if you choose to it's all about choice okay you can choose to do anything that you want okay and you can do it you have willpower i was depressed myself from a teenager until like my late 20s so about like you know over 10 years of a deep depression and you know i was I was pretty I was really sad every day really depressed right but the the moment that I chose I said I'm not going to do this anymore okay I'm not going to be depressed anymore and it was a journey and it was a struggle but now I I don't know when's the last time I've been depressed or sad or whatever I have to watch movies sad movies and things to feel that emotion now and i and I, and i'm gracious i'm grateful for that emotion because gratitude is also an important concept we talked about forgiveness in the last episode a lot and uh i believe gratitude is also a very powerful if our very powerful tool that we need to be using every day being grateful i'm always praying over my food i'm praying over my water i'm praying over my day i'm i'm grateful for these things that i have in my life i'm grateful for everything so you can be the poorest person in the world and be the happiest person because you're like i'm grateful for these things that i have while as a rich person is could be more uh, less happier than the poor person because they're not grateful for anything they always want something more right they want oh this car sucks i want a different brand new car oh the neighbor has has this you know thing that i want and it's going to make me happy if i get it but if your happiness is always elsewhere if your happiness is always in oh i want this thing or i want this this new job or you know, I want to date this person, right? If it's always somewhere else, if your happiness always lies somewhere else, then will you ever attain happiness? That's why happiness starts within, right? It starts with the choice that you make. You have to make on your own free will the choice to be happy, okay? So that's what I did. That's how I overcame my sadness and my depression. Okay, guys? So make the choice, okay? I don't want to hear excuses. Excuses don't mean anything, okay? They're just excuses. They're lazy. Don't be lazy. Make the choice. Every time you feel that depression coming or the anxiety or whatever it is that you think you are, you can switch it around. You can change it, okay? I used to be a very anxious person as well because I wasn't doing anxiety comes because we're not doing the things that we should be doing we get your anxiety is relieved by going to work out or going riding you know riding a, a bike or you know writing a poem or uh you know whatever being out in nature because that's those are things that are should be natural to us right but we're all anxious because we're stuck on the phones we're stuck you know scrolling the internet right like we're not doing things that are natural we're doing things that are artificial and it makes us anxious because we're like man i feel like i'm not doing anything you feel like you're not getting anything done right so anxiety is trying it's 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 a, an emotion or a feeling that it's it's trying to everything everything your body does it's trying to send you a signal okay so if you're sick or depressed or anxious or whatever it's a it's a signal that your body is trying to send to you right it's trying to say hey get up all right get up i'm anxious 
I need to I need to do something you know like I'm telling you my body is communicating to you saying hey do this hey I'm depressed because I'm not going working out getting my those endorphins that I need or whatever right like or I'm not being sociable I'm not going out and having a social interaction because that's natural that's the way things should be right so we are depressed because we are not making the right choices so start with making that internal choice i'm gonna change i'm gonna progress i'm gonna not be those things that i don't want to be i don't want to be depressed i don't want to be anxious all those things right okay anyways <laughs> uh like i said i go on tangents a lot so um not entirely sure what i want to focus on i do want to continue on the path right we keep talking about this path right and just like Christ said, we have to start with the foundation, okay? So the foundation would be, and, and, I, and I love using analogies. I love using nature, right? Like nature is the greatest teacher. We can learn everything from nature. Like nature is the most efficient uh, machine, right? It's not, you know, not like an artificial machine, but it just, everything it does is efficient right like when you I, I think it's amazing when you look at it like uh um like the sidewalk or something like cement right like you'll see it sometimes you'll see like a blade of grass poking through or like a flower popping out and you're just like holy crap how did how did nature break through the cement like how did it it finds a way right it's very resilient it's very efficient it's very persistent in what it does and that's why we have to keep you know like my like my driveway like i just uh had the cracks like i pulled out the, it was cracked right because of an earthquake or whatever and and i had to pull out all the weeds and i pulled out the weeds and then i i, I put some more cement on it and sealed it up and then couple of years later guess what the weeds have come back and it's and they found a way to come back right and I, I took so long like two weeks I like did the most I could to seal up these cracks but still nature finds a way right and that's what we want to be so we have our foundation obviously um, and I want to keep using these ana analogy of, of nature and a f just a flower. Let's take a flower, okay? I, I like to use anything in nature because it just you could learn you could learn so much from it. And a lot of times we don't even we don't even recognize nature anymore. You know, like you have kids now walking walking by like a field of flowers or a beautiful tree or whatever, and they don't pay no mind to it because why? Because they label, they label things, right? They say this is, this is a tree. Uh, this is grass. Uh, this is a flower. Blah blah. It's these labels that we need to get rid of. Okay, empty your cup, empty your cup, become a new person, right? Become a good student. Have an open mind. Have an open cup, right? Stop labeling everything. Don't label yourself. Don't label yourself. Don't label the things around you. Just be, right? Just be in the moment. Everywhere you go, be in the moment. Look around you. I see this tree right in front of me. I'm outside right now in my car. And I see this beautiful tree around me. What do I see about it? Oh, it's it's fractaling, right? Everything's a fractal. These branches are branching out, right? You know, let me draw what I'm seeing. So... So right now we are <laughs> we're in the third episode, right? So we are just laying the foundation. So we're just dirt right now, okay? We're dirt. We're trying to figure out what the heck, right? So our path of enlightenment is starting in the dirt. We're just the dirt right now, right? We're just in the dirt. Um, and that's fine because you got to have a good foundation if if you want a tree to grow if you want flowers to go if you want if you plant a garden you got to have good soil right so we want we're at the very beginning stage of enlightenment and we want good soil because then we could grow up strong and tall and 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 bring forth fruit right like Jesus said by 
you should ye shall know them by their fruit okay so we need a good good foundation and we need good soil okay and then just like enlightenment right if we were a flower we start with the soil and then we'll grow right just like just like I drew in the last couple episodes, the middle path, right? Everything is a reflection of the creator, okay? Here we have the perfect, the perfect personification of the creator, which is the sun, right? Sun is all loving, all giving, like it's up there every single day. We pay no attention to it, right? Because we, we labeled it, right? Well, it's the sun. It's a ball of gas, blah, blah, blah. I learned about it in school, okay? So you labeled it and you forgot about it because you put it in your little monkey brain, right? You put all these you put all these labels in your monkey brain and you think you're so smart because <laughs> you labeled it. I'm so smart. I know this the object in the sky is just a ball of gas and it just brings us some some sun right like you pay no attention to it because your monkey brain is is trying to rationalize right so i forget the labels okay so and i love it i love it because uh like i said in the last episode all these all these all of all of nature all of the world all the everything it's it's all giving glory to the creator Okay, it's all giving glory back, right? Just think of a flower, just a simple flower, right? What is a flower? It's imitating its creator, right? It's the same thing, right? There's the sun. It's. Do you see a resemblance to the flower and the sun? And what is the flower? You ever, like, have a plant in your house and you, like, put it in a somewhat dark room by a window like that plant will grow towards the window because it wants to grow towards the light, right? All flowers in time bend towards the sun, okay? And it's all fractals, right? It's all fractaling up. It grows with fractals. That's why I say age doesn't matter. We, we don't age, we fractal, okay? When we're growing up from a baby to a toddler to a man, we fractal our bodies are fractaling everything is fractaling because we're all spinning we're all part of the spiral we're all part of this fibonacci spiral right all part of the golden ratio right so the the flower wants to imitate its creator but it wants to give it glory right so just think about it how how lovely it is that a flower okay offers really nothing else but to just be beautiful right to just be right to just be what it's supposed to be you know and it, and it's beautiful because it just wants to provide beauty to the world and a good smell sometimes right like and it's and it's and, it, and it's like they're all reaching towards the sun, towards the creator, right? It's like pure love, right? Like it's just, it's awe when you, when you really just sit down and just be, right? No labels, no nothing. And you look at these flowers and you're just like, wow, they're just like. They just want to reach the sun, you know? Like, they just want to touch the sun. They just want to feel that love. They want to feel that warmth, you know? And they provide the beauty, you know? They're fruits, right? It's amazing, right? It's amazing. The sun, nature, everything. We can learn so much from it, but a lot of this world is bent on, to, on destroying it. It's, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> It's incredible how how crazy and how off balance we've become as a civilization, right? Like we're so off balance right now. It's it's going to be a wild swing back to balance us out cuz the universe always wants to balance itself out. The universe craves balance. The universe 
favors balance because the yin yang principle right and always the swirl for it to keep swirling right i always think it's interesting how there's a there's a verse in the bible how um it says you know god's basically saying that if you're if you're neither hot or nor cold and you're lukewarm i'm gonna spit you out of my mouth so it's saying if you're hot or cold you could be hot or cold that's a that's a positive and a negative charge right that's a that's a different that's a polarity right you could either be dark or light right it's a polarity but if you're if you're lukewarm if you're neither you're you're basically useless right because the yin yang that the spin is what is needed the world for the universe and everything to continue to to be to, to continue to exist there has to be this charge right there has to be you know, a positive and electric charge and i will i want to get into those concepts because those concepts changed my mind so like or i've changed my life my my whole worldview perspective on things because it's easy to be like uh use good and evil as your like guiding uh perspective i guess you know like because you could you could label anything as evil you could label anything as good and everybody wants to label themselves as good right even the most evil people believe that they're the best people right like they believe like bill gates probably actually believes that he's helping the world out by creating these vaccines by buying up all the farmland by creating artificial food and artificial milk and blah 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 right and blocking out the sun like he probably actually genuinely believes that he is a good person that's why i don't like to use this good and evil concept because it's it's so opinionated it's so biased i don't want to be biased about things okay i want to i want to break it down to just like used to do when you make like a pro and cons list that's basically a positive and a negative list right so like people you know for instance okay we could use trump because a lot of people use trump like your whole have because he's really polarized uh the left and the right against each other right so like the right believes he's freaking the second coming right like they believe he's the freaking savior of the world I mean, a lot of them do right they believe like he's going to save america blah 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 make a great make america great again okay um all that stuff right and then the left is like oh he's just the freaking the devil right he's evil blah 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 that's what i'm saying like it, who's who's really right about it right and so we have to put into perspective we instead of saying good and evil say what's the positives that are coming from him and what's the negatives and what's what's more is he hot or is he cold you know so we got to figure that out and that's how i like to see everything as like is this is this a net positive of this this event that's happening in my in my life is it a net positive or is it a net negative like like if you have an argument with like your spouse your significant other like is it a net positive or is it a net negative what are you gaining from it okay like you need we need to start putting though that perspective into our life of is this a positive charge or a negative charge because we want to be hot or cold right and what a lot of people are doing like this is why i don't i don't worry because if you know and i've already proven that these prophecies have are becoming fulfilled then i already know if then all the if 99 percent of the prophecies have already come true then i can assume the pattern tells me right i always talk about patterns patterns are an another very important tool that we need to start using on our journey towards enlightenment right patterns pattern recognition okay is a great 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 tool we got forgiveness we got gratitude and now we got pattern recognition right 
you got to start using you got to start thinking about these things right and anti-labeling right open-mindedness open soul all that stuff right so if we if we look at a pattern say like oh does does this politician he promised all these things right when he was trying to get voted in and he, now he is in power did he do those things right no they generally don't right so they're liars right so the pattern that they have is a liar so then we can know oh okay that that pattern that he's using is is lying so he is a liar so now we know they're a liar right if that person steals all the time the pattern is telling us he's a thief right so you you can start um figuring out people and things and all that stuff by the patterns and that's how i figured out the prophecies i saw the patterns that's how i knew a pandemic was coming because i i figured out the pattern that the world is going i also said ai was going to start being huge by the end of or by uh by this year right and guess what ai is freaking blowing up all over the place right it's a pattern if you if you know the pattern then you know the future because everything unfolds like a flower, right? Everything unfolds like a fractal. Everything unfolds like the Fibonacci spiral, right? Everything is just spiral, 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 right? So <laughs> it's in, in these knots, right? Like this knot that I drew. Look how uh, I like to think of time like this. Like time is sometimes it creates these little knots there, and it becomes like this becomes the doorway, right? This little knot that it creates, and that's the doorway that um, an event, a big event happens, and that's that's the pattern that keeps out. That's how people can predict markets and predict things in the future, and that's how I predicted because I could see the doorway and I could see oh this is a doorway to the past right or a doorway to the future or what whatever and that's an, another concept that I'll, I'll go down later on okay so anyways we're just a we're not even a flower right now right we're just the freaking dirt right now right we're just the dirt and that's fine you know we could be we could be in the dirt right now that's, that is perfectly fine which is a little sapling coming out of the dirt okay anyways um, let me turn that off okay there we go Sorry guys. Okay. So, um, yeah. Third episode. Okay. So, patterns, right? What did we learn last episode? Knowledge of good and evil, right? Let's not think of it as good and evil, though. I think the more accurate term to describe it would be the tree of knowledge of the knowledge of positive and negative okay because good and evil like people people will say like yoga is evil right like how can yoga be evil right or like they'll say gun guns are evil like how can a gun be evil right so and that's what i'm saying like guys start stop labeling things right you gotta start you gotta throw away your beliefs you gotta use positive and negative right like yoga is freaking great for the body like why would that be something that's negative enlightenment is great for the mind and the soul and, and the spirit and the body like how can that be a negative thing how can that be evil right we got to think of positive and negative knowledge of positive and negative because everything like like science says the whole universe is electric right they call it the electric universe and you could see that um with the with the 
if you ever look at a picture of like our veins and stuff right like you know the veins going all around you just like lightning right like we have all the this, this stuff right coming out of us right and the universe is is uh, very similar to that as well like you can look at uh, images where it's it's all looking the same right because we're all just fractals we're all fractals of the image of God okay just like how the flower is imitating is an image of the Sun we are an image of God are you starting to see the <laughs> our entire self our entire body everything about us okay the physical mental and spiritual right all included part of ourself we are an imitation of the universe that's why our veins simulate are a representation an imitation a glorification of the universe right like we and what are we made out of again I, I said it in the last the last episode right or the first episode we are stars we are made out of stardust right our chemical makeup is the Sun is a star right it we are all just an imitation of God we are an image of God so if we are an image of God then what what does that mean what does that mean when God said hey in Genesis when he's when he was speaking about how Adam ate the fruit and will become like us because they like the gods because and they use God's plural in there you could reread it I'm not making this up but they were speaking to each other probably a council I'm sure like God has a government because that's how everything fractals everything's a hierarchy right like that's just natural right um, so like you know like they said hey now they have the knowledge of positive and negative now they're going to become like us so we don't want them to live forever in this in this sin right so we, then that's when they kicked them out of the garden of eden right so but that concept lingers right that god mentioned that oh we are like god not only are we made in god's image but now we have the knowledge of god we can attain the knowledge of God right all we need next is immortality which that's what Christ came to offer us right Christ is the tree of immortality right he's brought up on the cross what does he resemble the tree right <laughs> deep stuff right so if we are if we can accept that we're the image right everyone believes that right we're the spitting image of whatever God is right just like a flower is the image of the Sun we are an image of the universe right we're the microcosm to the macrocosm it's all fractaling it's everything's connected right so how much power does an image of God have how much power does something that has the knowledge of God have but wait a second don't we all just believe that we're just unworthy creatures don't we all just believe that we're sinful and we need someone to save us and you know we're just living in the past Aren't we just weak? Aren't we just victims here? Oh man, we can't do anything. The Illuminati is too powerful. Oh my God, the New World Order. What are we? What are we gonna do? Let's just talk about it all day, right? Let's just talk. Let's just 
talk about what they're doing to us all day and never never doing anything never gaining any power right why do they have all the power I will tell you why I will tell you their secrets because they believe they are gods now you think like okay why would they believe that how arrogant are they right why would they believe that well doesn't it say in your Bible just as Christ said to the uh, Pharisees when they were trying to ask oh are you saying that you are the son of God and he said well does it not say in your own scriptures that ye are gods oh my god blasphemy he just called us all gods there's only there's only one god what blasphemy right I'm not saying we are the creator of everything. I'm not saying I created the world and I created the universe and I created everything, right? I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm an image of that. I am a replica of that. I am a copy of God, right? Like you ever seen the movie Tron? Uh, how the the maker of Tron, he copied himself and then that copy became God of that of the world of Tron, right? We are a copy. We have the power within ourselves. And that's why I that's a big reason why I started a YouTube channel because I wanted to prove to people that you are powerful. That we are all powerful. We can... Ooh, we can do so much when we start believing that we actually have power. You know? That we can actually do something about this. About what's going on in our world. We can affect reality. We can change the future. Right? But we have to start stop labeling ourselves... We stop labeling ourselves as unworthy people. We need to stop labeling ourselves as sinful. Because yes, we do do negative things, right? Which we want to turn into positive things. But crying about it all day is not going to do anything. Okay, Christ already forgave you. So let it go. Let it go. Don't let it burden you anymore. Okay, yes, you will make mistakes. We all do, right? We make the wrong choices. A mistake is just the wrong choice. It's just a negative choice. But really, everything can, can correct itself. The, f the future can correct the past, okay? Because you can turn those mistakes, right? Those negative choices into positive ones if you actually learn from them which a lot of people don't because we are taught since elementary school and on all the way up to college and beyond you know in the workplace that we are not allowed to make mistakes we are given a negative grade for making mistakes right we are punished for making mistakes this is not the right way to teach this is not the right way we should be teaching it's wrong that's what's a lot of what's wrong in the world is because of how we were taught growing up it's that trauma again release the trauma quit fearing making mistakes that's why people cheat. That's why people lie. Cuz they will do any they will do anything to avoid the punishment of a mistake. But if we really want to be a positive light in this world, don't hide your mistakes. Don't hide your sin. Reveal it. Forgive it. Hug it. Give it gratitude for it happening. 
and get rid of the pattern of it happening again. Okay? We can learn everything from mathematical concepts, from scientific concepts, from chemistry. Okay? We can... When people tell me all of truth is contained in a single book, when the book itself, if you've read it, end of Revelation, that everything that Jesus taught back in the day, all his words could fill every single book in the entire world. That's how much knowledge, that's how much information that we don't have. And you're telling me that some fishermen back in the day, thousands of years ago, who have no, no education, were able to write and understand and interpret what the master was trying to tell them. Think about that for a second, all right? We can all be disciples of Christ, right? We can all become like Christ. Because Christ was the first to be, to admit, to forgive, to recognize the pattern, to use gratitude, right? He's the first to say, hey, it says in your own scriptures that we are all sons and daughters of the Most High. What's the Most High in the sky? The sun. <laughs> they say the Most High. They're talking about the sun. You know that, right? Manna that came from heaven. Where do you think it came from? The sun was feeding them. And I'm not saying the sun is the, the all in all, the creator, right? It's only local in our own solar system. There's obviously other suns out there that are bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? That control entire universes, entire galaxies. Intelligence. Why are they intelligent? How do I know they're intelligent? Because they create patterns. Look up the patterns of the movements of all the planets. They all dance around the sun. They're all giving praise and glory to the sun. All perfect patterns. You think that's random? You think that's chaos? There is no such thing as randomness or chaos. Everything is in order. And when we are out of order, we will be put back into order with balance. A reckoning will come for how out of balance we are. It will come. Believe that. It always happens. If you, could, if you look at history, all throughout history, the patterns... The fall and rise of great civilizations. Why? Because they were off balance. They strayed off the middle path, right? They strayed away. And they were balanced in the end. That's what's going to happen to us, right? It's... It's... It's not blasphemous, okay? Because Christ himself said, Ye are all gods. Ye are a son and daughter of the Most High. Ye will, will inherit the throne and the crown with me. Right? Does it not say that? We will all inherit we have inherited. We are all prodigal sons and daughters who have just 
walked off the path, right? We're all. That was the whole. That was the whole. The whole meaning behind it. He was saying we are, we are all prodigal sons and daughters. We've strayed off the path. But does that not mean that we are not the son of the king? Did not the the prodigal son return and say, "Hey, I will be thy servant." You know, just just to live back in your presence. And then the king replies, "Here's here's my here's my coat." Here's my crown. You are my son. You are not my servant. We, the same thing will happen to us. But here, while we are here, we don't want to bury our talents, right? The parable of the talents. So, very important information there. A lot of people are burying their talents in the ground because they're afraid. They're afraid of using their inheritance to to make the world better, to make the kingdom better, right? To grow the kingdom. They bury their talents out of fear. And they say, oh, well, we thought you were coming back. We thought you were going to just fix everything so I didn't want to lose what I already had what does the king say I will take from you what little you had and give to the other one who actually produced good fruit are you producing good fruit are you a good tree are you a good flower Are you reaching towards the sun, the most high? Are you growing? How is your soil? We are beyond powerful. And we could live in such a happy world. We we can. It it will happen. But I mean, don't you want to be a part of that change? Don't you want to be a part of that positive change in the world? Don't you want to be like the sun? Don't you want to be the sun? Right? Like, man, like, I, I am so ready for the future. I wish, I wish I was living in the future right now. It's going to be so much fun. Okay, heaven is just a, heaven is just a, a term for the universe. When we make it to outside of our world and start exploring the universe, that is when our civilization has reached heaven. that because everything is a fractal everything is a representation of a higher macrocosm we are in the mac microcosm macrocosm we're all reflecting back on each other it's all a reflection it's all an image of the creator the creator is inside of you the creator is inside of everything. Literally everything and everywhere. Everything is divine. Everything is alive. Everything is intelligent. 
This is enlightenment for you to realize that everything has the truth in it. Everything and everything is divine. Because when you start to see everything as divine, you start to see that tree as divine. You got you get to see it as God, as God's creation, or God, an image of God, a replica, a representation. And wouldn't you treat it then with respect? Wouldn't you treat it with love then? When you see someone walking across from you on the street, would you not see them as the creator? Would you not see them as an image of God? Would you not then love them as you say you love God? This is what Christ saw. He saw everything, everyone, as his brother, right? As a son and daughter of God. And that's how he was able to love everything so purely. Once we become more enlightened, we, we let more light into our, our eyes, right? Just like Christ said, if your eye is single, then your whole body will be full of light. Okay, he was talking about the imagination. He was talking about your third eye. He was talking about enlightenment. That's what it means to be enlightened. Your body full of light. Everything you see, the eye, your, the light literally will shine out of your eyes. There was a. There was once where uh, I was able to uh, achieve what I call God mode, and I was basically Neo in the Matrix, and I was affecting everything around me. All my thoughts became reality, and I took a picture with like fifteen other people. We were at a concert, and it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life and in the picture everyone else's eyes looks the same but it's only my eyes that are just glowing bright white literally and that's what Christ meant literally your eyes will be full of light literally your body will be full of light this is God mode Because when you start to see everything else as yourself, and if you think of yourself as an image of God, as your Bible states, as Christ said, then you start to see everything as divine, and then you start to treat everything divinely, like a sacred place, just like it says in the Bible, every step you take should be a holy a holy place the temple right what's the third temple why did Christ say that this temple will be destroyed a physical temple because he knew right why is Christ the chief cornerstone he wasn't talking about physical places that is over and done with just for like the law of Moses, eye for an eye. We don't need physical things anymore. We don't need idols set up. We don't need graven images set up. We don't need to build a third temple. We don't need to build a temple. We don't need to We don't need to build churches. The temple, the temple on your head, right? <laughs> Why is they call it the temple? Why is the throne of God in your mind? Why is your third eye your imagination? What is your imagination? Why do they fear the elite? 
fear your imagination? Why do they try to destroy your imagination as early as a child? Imagination is where the magic happens. That's why there's made a mage in imagination, imagination, right? Magic. That's where the magic happens. Is in the mind. That's how my thoughts became reality. That's God mode. And imagine everyone being on God mode. Right? Imagine that. How, how would they be able to stop us? Huh? We would be on equal playing field with them. Because they're not the only ones that can use magic now. We can all use magic. So. Um, so I've been talking about an hour. Uh, not about anything really specific, I guess the image of God, so I'll probably call this episode the image of God, because it's a very important concept that we need to re realize, and I know a lot of people, if they hear this, they'll think, oh my God, blasphemy, just as Christ was called blasphemous by the Pharisees, right, <laughs> just a fractal. Right? It's happening all over again. I like to say that most Christians would actually crucify Jesus all over again if Jesus was here today. If Jesus was here today, they would crucify him again. Because they haven't let go of the past. They haven't embraced the future. They haven't realized who or what they are. They forgot. We all forgot we are the image of God. And if we're the image of God, then how are we not powerful? We are an image of God. How are we not powerful? Just as a blade of grass breaks free of the cement and grows in and points towards the sun so shall we we shall break out of this this box that they have us in break free and we shall point towards the sun because all glory goes to the creator we are all the spitting image of God Anyways, guys, I um, guess that'll be it for today. So, I will speak again to you guys soon. Might be a while, so um, be sure to, to subscribe and provide comments if you if you want. Um, I'm also on Twitch or Twitter, FutureMan19. You can message me anytime. I'm always open to answering questions and things. Anyways, guys, love y'all. Start to use these uh, these concepts, right? We're, we're building up our toolbox towards the path, right? We're all growing towards the sun, right? So we're building up our toolbox. We got forgiveness. We got gratitude and we got pattern recognition, right? Pattern. We are the pattern of God, right? So, talk to you guys soon, alright? Take care. Bye-bye.